So the story of Sleeping Beauty. Once upon a time, there was a king and there was a queen, and they lived in a very big and beautiful palace. I've been in a palace before. And they were happy, except for one thing. They just wanted to have a baby. Sometimes the queen would say, oh, I wish we had a baby. And sometimes the king would say, oh, I wish we had a baby. But one day, the queen went into the palace gardens and she passed the pond and out of the pond popped a frog. And the frog said, a rabbit, next year, you will have a baby. And the frog popped back down into the pond. And the queen was so excited. She ran all the way back to the palace. And she said to the king, the frog said, we're going to have a baby. And the king said, maybe the frog knows. And the following year, the queen had the most beautiful baby the most lovely little girl. Oh, she was so beautiful that they decided to call her Aurora, which means dawn. And that's when the sun rises and the whole sky goes pink and it's very beautiful. And they were so happy, they decided to hold a party. And they got very, very busy deciding who to invite. They probably invited all of you <laughs> and, they, and your animals. And they invited friends and neighbours. And most important of all, they had to invite the 13 fairies. They were wise fairies. What about some elves? Only fairies. And those fairies could give blessings, good wishes to the baby, which would all come true because the fairies had magic powers. But the king was looking in the kitchen cupboards and he said, oh dear, we only have 12 gold plates and there are 13 fairies, what can we do? Make, make um, plates out of clay. Oh no, you can't give fairies plates out of clay. I'm afraid what the Queen said was, well, maybe it doesn't matter. We'll just invite 12. After all, the oldest, well, she's so poorly, she hardly ever leaves the house, she probably won't even hear about the party. Well, she did get to hear about the party and she wasn't invited. And I wonder how she felt. Can you make a face about how it might feel if everybody's invited to the party and not you? Can you make a face? Don't tell me, make a face. You're all looking like this. I'm being a mirror to how you're looking. Angry, disappointed. It's not fair. But the king and the queen and all the other guests were much too busy having a good time and nobody thought of the 13th fairy. And they had songs and dances and lots of lovely food. And then it was time for the 12 fairies who were invited to give a blessing to the lovely Aurora, who lay there, not crying, lovely pink cheeks, a little tuft of chestnut brown hair, big eyes. And each fairy went up to her and gave a wish. And one said, may you be strong. And the other said, may you be clever. And another one said, may you always be kind to everybody. And another one said, may you be beautiful. And so on and so on, one lovely wish after another, anything you could wish for in life. And the 12th fairy was just about to give her a wish when all of a sudden, crash, the door opened. And there stood a very angry old woman with a wand in her hand. Who was it? Fairy. Yes, 
the thirteenth fairy. And she said, You think I didn't know about this party? Well, I did know. And you couldn't be bothered to invite me. So I am going to give a different kind of wish to baby Aurora. I am going to wish that on her 16th birthday, she's going to prick her finger with a spindle and then fall down dead. Huh. And off she stomped. And all the guests went, oh, oh no! And the king and the queen went white and started to cry. <laughs> but the twelfth fairy hadn't given her wish yet, her blessing. And she said, don't worry, don't worry. It won't be so bad. I can't change it completely. But it is true, when she's 16, she will prick her finger with a spindle. But don't worry, she won't die. She'll just fall asleep. And she'll sleep for a hundred years. Years. What? Well, everybody, oh, they gave a little sigh. At least he's not going to die. But do you think the king liked the thought that his daughter was going to sleep for a hundred years? No. no. Nobody would like you to sleep for a hundred years. Yeah, I'm sure a hundred years, <laughs> it would get dark. It would get yeah. dark and light a lot of times. Yeah. That was the fa fairy gave a very evil wish because she was upset because she wasn't invited to the party. But in some stories, yes, but not in all stories. Meanwhile, the king was thinking, there must be something I can do about this. Well, she said she's going to prick her finger on a spindle. But suppose there were no spindles. Remember, this is a spindle here or no spinning wheels in the whole country. I know what I'll do. I'm going to send a message to the whole kingdom that everybody is to bring me their spinning wheels and their spindles. And I'm going to get rid of them, all of them. So he sent out a message to all corners of the country with all his servants. Everybody must hand in their spinning wheels and their spindles. And people brought their spinning wheels from all over the country and they were all put in the palace gardens. And then a big fire was lit, a huge bonfire. And it was so big, you could see it for miles. And that was the end of the spindles and the spinning wheels in the country. All gone. Ha! Huh, so that's that, said the king. No problem. And Aurora the lovely baby Aurora, grew up to be a lovely child. She was all those things the fairies wished. Clever, kind, gentle, sweet and strong. And everybody loved her. And time passed. And guess what birthday it was? Yes. Remember? 16th birthday. That was the special birthday. Her 16th birthday. She was so excited. You know when you're excited about your birthday, you can't keep still? So she went running up and down the palace everywhere. Now, the king and the queen, her mum and dad, had gone out to collect a few presents. So nobody noticed what she was up to. She ran here, she ran there, she ran upstairs, she ran downstairs. She was so excited. And suddenly she saw a flight of stairs she had never, ever seen before. It kind of looked old and dusty and unpainted. But she ran up it two at a time in a big hurry. And there was a little door at the top of the stairs. And in the door, was a rusty key and she turned the key and she pushed the door open and she peeped through and there was an old woman with a wheel and something spiky on the end of the wheel and she was holding something fluffy and some thread was going over the wheel 
and round and round that spiky thing, that spindle. Of course, Aurora had never seen one of those before because they'd all been burnt. And she said to the old woman who was spinning, Hello, Granny. And the old woman said, Hello, my dear. Well, what are you doing? I'm spinning. Oh, that's so interesting. And why does that thing go round and round? Oh, ouch. She'd pricked herself on the spindle. And the old woman smiled. But Aurora saw a drop of blood on her finger and suddenly she felt very sleepy and she sank down onto the bed, fast asleep. And the old woman disappeared. And you know, Aurora was sleeping so deeply that her sleep seemed to spread throughout the palace down the stairs, into the courtyard, where a little dog was playing and scratching, scratching behind the ear, do you remember? Scratching, anybody scratching? And suddenly fell fast asleep. And the horses, the horses were munching their oats. Can you do a munch? And then what happened? They did, they fell asleep. All of them. All of the horses in the courtyard. And there were boys and girls just a bit older than you who'd been brushing the horse's coat. And they fell asleep on the horse's backs. And in the kitchen, the kitchen maid was mixing a cake mix because she was going to make a delicious chocolate cake for Aurora's birthday and she was very busy and she was mixing. How was she mixing? Just like this. Sugar and butter and eggs and, and chocolate and then she fell asleep in the bowl. Fell asleep in the bowl. And then she mixed over again. Very, very good. And then the cook was making pancakes and she had just tossed the pancake into the air and she fell fast asleep. Good. And the pancake seemed to float in the air and sleep as well. Later. But now it's floating. The fire went down in the fireplace and the fire seemed to sleep. And even the breeze went down. So everything was completely still. There was no wind. And the king and the queen had just come in with their arms full of lovely wrapped presents and they fell asleep on the floor, on top of the presents. Nothing moved, except something began to grow all the way around the palace. It was a big, big hedge in a circle all the way around the palace and it was very prickly. It was like rose bushes but no flowers and it grew so fast it hid the windows in the palace. The first floor, the second floor, the third floor, all the towers, even the flag that was flying on the top tower was hidden by this huge hedge so you couldn't see inside and if you had walked past you wouldn't have even known that there was ever a palace there. All you could see was this huge prickly hedge. Well, the people in the neighbourhood knew what was going on because many of them had been to the party. And some people were nodding their heads and said, ah, oh, it's the evil fairy's curse. Aurora has fallen asleep. And we're not going to see her for a hundred years. And sometimes people passed through, sometimes princes, and they heard the story. And some of them said, we're going to rescue her. We'll cut away through the hedge. And they would draw their swords. Ta-da! Can you do that? Ta-da! Ta and through the hedge they would go, cutting and cutting. But after a while, 
they would always get stuck. And people had to come and pull them out and rescue them. And lots of time passed. People grew old. Children were born. Children grew up. And one day, a young prince was walking past. And he saw that huge hedge, and he asked an old man, well, tell me about that hedge. Why is it growing there? What's behind it? And the old man said, my grandpa told me about Princess, uh, what was her name? Aurora. Aurora. And how she fell asleep. And she's still sleeping, and she's going to be sleeping for a hundred years. And the prince said, I'm going to rescue her. And he drew his sword. Ta da! Can you do that again? Ta da! <laughs> and the old man said, Don't be so silly, you'll only get stuck. Everybody gets stuck. I don't care. Why well, did he use the sword to get her out? Well, they all tried, but they failed. But he thought, I can do it. So he walked up to the hedge. Now, what he didn't know, but I'm going to tell you now, was that the hundred years had passed. And so everything began to change. Suddenly, roses began to grow from the bushes. Red roses and white roses. And even though he had a sword, he didn't need to chop anything because the hedge suddenly opened. And he walked through, and as he walked, the hedge kept opening and opening, and he wasn't pricked by thorns, and he picked a lovely red rose. <gasps> and the scent was so beautiful. And at last, he got through to the palace. And he was in the courtyard, and who did he see fast asleep with his paw behind his ear? Ruff. Who? A dog. <laughs> And who did he see with their noses in their oat bags? Nay! Nee! Horses! Horses! <laughs> and he walked into the main entrance of the palace and there were the king and the queen, crowns and all, lying fast asleep on a heap of presents. What's going on here? So he started to climb the steps. He climbed up one flight, Two flights, three flights, he found a very narrow flight of steps going right up into a tower. There was a door with a rusty key. He opened it. Do you remember the noise the door makes when you open it? Bang! <laughs> your, your door goes bang, my door goes because it's very old and rusty. That's a good one. Hasn't been open for a long, long time. And there he sees a beautiful young woman, a young girl really, fast asleep on the bed with long curly chestnut hair and pink cheeks and a little smile on her face. And he sits down on the bed and she looks so lovely. He can't help himself. He just gives her a gentle kiss on the cheek just like that. And she opens her eyes and she looks at him and she smiles. And he gives her the red rose he's picked and she smells it. And he gives her his hand and she takes it and they begin to talk. But meanwhile, downstairs in the courtyard, suddenly who wakes up? What does it look like? Like this. And the horses wake up. What noise do they make? Nay! Nay! Very, very good. And in the kitchen, the kitchen maid is, she's got her hand in the mix, her head in the mix, and then what happens? She wakes up. And what's on her face? Butter and sugar. Butter and sugar. And eggs. And eggs. But she starts mixing the cake. And the cook wakes up and she's holding the frying pan and bang, the pancake comes down. And they get busy getting ready for the birthday party. And the king and the queen sit up. Oh, they've been lying on the floor for a hundred years. Oh, oh, I do feel achy. 
and they dust themselves down. What are all these presents? Ah, it's Aurora's birthday. We must get ready for Aurora's birthday. And meanwhile, the Princess Aurora and the young prince are coming down the stairs holding hands. And at last they come down to the king and the queen. And the king and the queen says, Aurora, I remember now you've been asleep. And she says, this is my friend, the prince. Well, we must have a birthday party for you. He can come too. And that's what they do. They have a lovely birthday party. The cake mix is put in a pan and becomes chocolate cake. There are loads of pancakes. What do you like with your pancakes? Chocolate. 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 Syrup. And syrup. Sorry? Syrup. Strawberries. And cream. I, I like and cream and sugar. And so they have all those and plain. And it's such a lovely party. And the king and the queen notice that Princess Aurora and the prince whom she's just met are becoming very, very good friends. And they become even better friends and they begin to love each other. And eventually... They get married and they live happily for many, many years, for the rest of their lives together. Yay. And that is the end of the story of Sleeping Beauty.